The Akai Force and the Machine Plus are standalone heavyweights. And in this video, they're gonna be facing off in a Street Fighter style matchup. This is the first one in a series of matchups I'm gonna be doing this year. So let's get into this brawl and see who comes out ahead. Hey, it's Pink Buddha, and I've been prepping to do this matchup for a while, really digging into the differences between these two different devices. So here's how this matchup is gonna work. So I'm gonna put them head to head on a number of different topics. And I loosely divided those in between two main categories, hardware and workflow, just to keep things organized. And they're gonna be 13 different rounds. We're gonna talk about inputs and outputs, navigation around the systems, headphones, storage, MIDI, effects, pads and macros, and then also recording audio, sampling, organization, timing, and finishing tracks. And these face-offs are gonna focus on differences between the two, not ways that they're similar. So let's start with inputs and outputs. So in standalone mode and on the physical hardware, both have two inputs, although the ones on the fours are XLR and also have phantom power, which is a pretty huge thing in my opinion, because that means you can use whatever kind of microphone that you want. Getting a mic into the machine is gonna be more complicated because there's no XLR input, because you're either gonna need to use like an external mixer or you need some kind of adapter like this it's gonna take the XLR and turn it into a quarter inch. The Force also has separate gain controls for each channel, whereas the machine only has one. And then the Force has four outputs versus just two that are on the machine. Now with the latest update for the Force that came out a couple months ago, Akai made a huge leap forward in letting you use an external interface with it in standalone mode. So now you can have up to 32 inputs and outputs. I mean, oh my God, that's just so many. Now, if you're using the machine in conjunction with a computer, you can use any kind of interface you want, which then does expand the number of inputs and outputs just like on the Force. And last but not least, the Force has some CV outputs, four of them on the back panel. Personally, I barely use these, but it's nice to know that the option is there. Okay, so for the first matchup, I'm gonna have to give this round to the Force. Okay, so now let's compare how you navigate your way around on these two devices. Both have a pretty good layout in terms of like buttons and things like that that you can push. The most notable difference is that the Force has a touch screen. Now, I admittedly have some mixed feelings about this option. I think it works great when you're selecting some larger object and just jumping in, but they can also be really inexact, especially when I'm in clip mode and I need to get in here and touch individual notes. It's very difficult to do that. You end up fat fingering things a lot. This is not a touch screen here. Everything has to be controlled by these buttons or these knobs. I will say that I'll give the force a bit of an edge in the sense that you can just push this menu button and all the options are listed there for you. There's no exact example here on the machine. You have to kind of remember which button that you want to push to get around different places. Both of them kind of have this main knob that's there and they might appear to be very similar where you, you know, turn the knob to control parameters on the machine. However, it also can be used for navigation, it's like a little joystick. And I really like using this more than I would have expected. In terms of navigating by buttons, I think the machine has a little bit of an edge. A lot of that comes from the shift button because all the controls you access with shift are labeled on different pads or buttons. The force has some buttons that are labeled to go with shift, but a lot of it you just have to kind of remember. And having so many shift options on the machine does make getting around pretty fast. Now, all that said, I think they're so close between the two that I'm actually gonna have to give this round to both of them. Okay, so the next hardware comparison I wanna make might seem like a very trivial thing, but for me, at least it's had a big impact on how I use the devices. And that's the headphone jack. On the force, it's right here on the front panel. For the machine, it's located on the back side. And this might seem like a relatively small distinction, but like 99% of the time, the headphones are just gonna go on your own head. So having it closer to your own head makes sense on the machine. When I put it in the back there, I'm always kind of trying to address this cord putting it out of the way, either tucking it on the side or it tends to flop over the front of things. And so I really appreciate how on the force it's located right there in the front. There's also a big contrast between the two in terms of how the metronome is routed through the headphones. On the force, it's very easy to send the output of the metronome through outputs three and four, which will still allow you to hear it through the headphone jack. And if you send the rest of your mix through outputs one and two, you're gonna be the only person that can hear the metronome. This is super helpful if you're performing live and you're recording stuff on the fly or you're making a recording of your live performance. On the machine, 
clean, you just don't have that option. There are some workarounds, but they are workarounds rather than just an option that's built in. Again, that might seem like a small deal, but having something that's very easy to route is a big difference between something that requires a workaround. Okay, so for this round, I think the force is very clearly the winner. So moving on, let's now talk about storage on these two devices. Both of them have SD cards. The Force has a slot in the front. The machine has it on the side. But the Force does have something special that's new with the latest update, and that's the ability to do disk streaming by installing a solid state drive in the back. Now you can kind of do the same thing with machine when you're connected to a computer, but that SSD drive on the Force is really powerful. So definitely in standalone mode, Force comes out ahead here and is also off to an early four to one lead. Okay, so let's talk about MIDI. And now both of these have a really great system, but I will give the Force a bit of an edge here in that you access many of the MIDI controls right from the mixer by looking at in and out, which gives you a great bird's eye view of the audio routing, the MIDI routing, all those things at once. And that's pretty great to be able to see all those things just on one screen. On the machine, you access MIDI by drilling into specific channels or groups and adjusting things this way but there's no way to see it as a whole. Now that said, the machine also has a couple cool things that the Force doesn't have. And one is that you can control MIDI routing from the pad level where each pad can have different MIDI routing. For the Force, it's only per track. Secondly, on the machine, you have the ability to load in these MIDI presets. So you can load up preset mapping for like a specific synthesizer or drum machine. That is so cool. Both of them have MIDI learn functions Force just introduced that on the latest update, but admittedly it's not as built out yet. And there's some major limitations I won't go into here because that's a whole video unto itself. Okay, so this is a tough one here because the machine had a lot of great features the Force didn't have. But for me, that screen where you can see all the MIDI at once, that at least put them both on the same level. Okay, so next let's compare effects on these two devices. For the most part, I would say that the quality of the stock effects on both of these are really similar and quite good. In standalone mode, the force might have a little bit of an edge with regard to like the quality of these internal effects. But if you count in how you can use the machine in computer mode, your choices are endless because you can use third party VSTs and whatnot. And same thing with the number of effects. When you hook the machine up to a computer, you have all the third party effects you would ever want. On the machine, you can also add Add as many different effects as you want to a single track, basically until you just run out of memory. And that's a big contrast to the Force, which only has four effect slots per track. Being able to have as many effects as you want on a track is a huge benefit compared to the four slots in the Force, because let me tell you, those can get used up really fast. So this one is really the first clear winner for the machine. Next, let's talk about pads on these two different devices. And there's a lot to discuss here. Let's look at finger drumming first. For my taste, the machine really stands out here. These pads play like butter. They feel good to hit them. There's plenty of room. By contrast, on the Force, these are just so much smaller. I find it a little bit hard to finger drum on these because of the fact that you just don't have very much room to move around. But this tight arrangement means that you can essentially fill up this entire space with samples, giving you 64 different samples right at your fingertips. Another drawback about finger drumming on the force is that I find it's easy to hit some of these other buttons at the bottom. If it's in record mode and you accidentally bump one of these, you're gonna end up switching to an entirely different track, screwing up your recording or your playing. Over on the machine, you just don't really have anything in the way when you're playing these pads except for this mute button here, which I've accidentally bumped a few times. So to summarize, the machine has some great feeling pads. The force has a tighter arrangement, less space between the pads, but that means you get more pads. Now let's talk about some differences in how you mute pads or sounds. On the machine, it is really easy to do so. Just push this mute button and you can turn it on and off here. The force actually has no way to mute individual pads. And this does present some challenges when you're arranging a track. Because if you just want to drop out the kick for a second, there's no really way to do that unless you've created an entirely separate track for the kick and the snare and the hi-hats and so on. That means you have to create a lot of tracks if you want to use the mute button to turn individual sounds on and off. So yeah, in terms of muting pads, the machine definitely has the force beat in this area. Now, if we're gonna look at how else you can use these pads, kind of what I would call multitasking, on the force, you have the ability to be able to adjust the layout for the pads in multiple ways. For example, this is my favorite arrangement where you have this top section that can trigger clips 
We have this section over here for playing the pads. And then this section right here are pad macros. And I'll talk a little bit more about macros later, but this gives you so much control right here on your fingertips. There's not really an equivalent for that on the machine, except for the fact that if you're using these buttons on top here to switch between pad mode or playing with a keyboard or playing chords or entering in events, you can get there pretty quickly, but it doesn't have everything all together in a certain layout like the Force does. And that is something really unique to the Force compared to how you access deeper layers on the machine by hitting a button or two. In terms of playing scales on either of these two devices, they're pretty similar. You can select different modes and scales and all that. Although the Force does have some really unique layouts for the notes, like this piano view here, where these are the white notes and these are the black notes. They also have a guitar layout, one for the bass, and then this tone is, <laughs> which I actually had to look up because I had no idea what this was. <laughs> I have no idea why they thought to include this, but there you go, it's an option. So the Force definitely has more pads to use when playing instruments, as well as these different scale options. Uh, and man, this one's a really tough one to judge because they're just so different. So I'm gonna have to say this round is a tie. Okay, so let's talk about the differences in how these two devices handle macros. Admittedly, it's a little easier to do so on the machine. You simply press shift macro, then you just touch the parameter that you want to control. At the top, you just decide if you want that to be controllable at the master level or the sound level, whatever you might want to choose. And then these knobs are assigned to those particular parameters. Very fast, very easy. On the force, this is not so streamlined. You go to macros, then you decide if you want to be setting up macros for knobs, for the crossfader here, for the XY pad, or for the pads themselves when you're using them for macro controls. And it's a little bit more cumbersome to have to hit learn, go over to the parameter that you want to change, and then back to macros, turn off the learn, and then mess with those devices. Just way more streamlined on the machine. That said, when it comes to programming those macros, you have way more options, nuance, and controls on the force. You can set them up to be momentary, so as soon as you let go, it'll pop back into wherever you had it before. You can control the scaling of this. You can flip the scaling because maybe you want to turn the knob in the opposite direction to have the same effect. You can also stack macros, meaning that one knob could control multiple things. And let's talk for a second about pad macros because controlling a parameter with pressure or with a touch of a button is really different than using a knob. I really like using pad macros to turn on or off an effect. When you add in being able to use the crossfader for multiple things, these knobs here for multiple things, using the XY pad and also these pads. And when you combine all of that, the force is like a macro powerhouse if you want to take the time to actually go through and set all this up. Again, on the machine, it's just a lot faster, but you lack the depth of programming that you can accomplish on the force. So I think the force is the clear winner here. And at the end of this whole hardware section, the force has seven and the machine four. So force is up ahead at halftime. Now let's talk about some differences between the two when you record audio. On the force, when you record audio into a track, like track number four here, you record audio into clips and those can either be like free form where you're just recording without any stop time or they can be loops. And I do really love how you can just click a button to start recording into a track like this. And if you wanna record multiple takes, you just move down from one clip to the next. And the Force also has multi-track recording, which works for both audio and MIDI tracks. On the machine, you record audio into a pad and you can choose to record into takes or into sounds or into patterns. The take option, will record multiple takes onto one single pad. If you choose sound option, each of those different takes are recorded onto different pads. If you choose patterns, each take is recorded onto a different pattern. Overall, I think it's a little bit more straightforward on the force, easier to jump in and get started. All these different ways you can record on the machine give you some really unique options, but you also have to wrap your head around which one you wanna choose and why. And for this round, I think they're just so close that I'm gonna call this one a tie. Now let's talk about the sampler on these two devices. And there's some really big differences in this area. And the first of those major differences is how many sampling layers they have. On the Force, you can have up to four layers. Now on the machine, I actually don't know how many layers you can have on here. And I tried to test it by adding layer after layer after layer after layer. And I got up to 28. 
<laughs> and then I just stopped because 28 is a ridiculous amount to layer on one pad. Now there are also some significant differences between the two and how you trigger samples. On the force, every time you hit a pad, you can either have it cycle through the different samples, you can do different velocity layers, and you can also have it be random. On the machine, you only have the choice to use velocity layers or different zones. And I have to say, I'm kind of surprised that the machine doesn't have the round robin or the cycles option. But remember that you do have like a ridiculous amount of sample layers. So if you combine that with velocity and with different zones, it is still extraordinarily powerful. Now there's one more difference between the two that I think is very much worth mentioning, and that's the randomization option for the force. And there are eight different elements that you can randomize. Pitch, volume level, panning, offset, the attack, decay, cutoff, and resonance, and the slider to adjust depth. It's very subtle. So this isn't meant for like wild manipulation. It just keeps it a little bit more human and alive feeling. So for this round, I definitely think the machine has the more powerful sampler. Okay, so now let's talk about some differences in how you go about organizing things on the force or on the machine. And we're first gonna look at some differences in how you route audio. Now on the force, you do just have fewer options in that you can't route audio from one track to another track. You can only route audio to a sub mix, to the return track or the main outputs. That's pretty much it. When you're going to a sub mix, you can go from the sub mix into the, one of the outputs that are there. You can't go from a sub mix to another sub mix, which is kind of a really big bummer for me, honestly because you just don't have that many options around how you route the audio. Now on the machine, you really have tons of options for routing audio. And that's because you can route audio from one group to another group, or you can route the audio from a pad to a different group. Basically, you can just route audio anywhere. Going back to the force, even though you have fewer options, the language is more straightforward. Submixes is a common term used in mixing. So, you know, that's easy to understand. Return tracks are easy to understand. And then also just a simple thing like the outputs where it's one and two. So you obviously know that it's stereo. Going back to the machine, even though you have tons of options, the way they go about it is kind of weird or non-standard. For example, let's say you want to route audio from group B to group C or it could be a new group. I just created a new one and I want to route the audio from B to D. So I go to B and then go to my output here. And then I'm going to try to select D, but it's not there. And this took me forever to figure out. It was so frustrating because what you have to do is go to group D and you have to just put some sort of plugin on there. It can be an EQ or anything. It just has to have something on there, otherwise it won't receive audio. So you add an EQ and then suddenly I can go back to B and I can come in here and I can find group D to route audio there. Another example of something that's kind of wonky is how they label the outputs. So they might select external one, two, three, or four, but I have no idea if those are stereo or not. You have to set that up in the settings so that you know the external two is like outputs three and four. So it just doesn't make as much sense as it does on the force where stereo outputs have two numbers. It's not a big deal, but it is just a little wonky. So now let's talk about some differences between the two in terms of how you rearrange things like with tracks or groups and effects. On the force, you basically can't move anything around. So once you put it in place, that's where it's gonna stay. There are a few workarounds to a certain degree. Like if you wanna be able to get track number two to the end here, you can just simply copy it over here and then delete it out from the first spot and that will shift everything over. So if you wanna move tracks around, you're gonna to have to play a lot of leapfrog to move them forward delete them out, and there's a lot of room for mistakes in doing that. With regard to effects, once you put an effect in a slot, that's where it's going to stay. So there's no way to rearrange these effects after you put them to there. So yeah, moving things around the force, no can do. Now on the machine, you can basically move anything around. You can do it at the pad level. You simply hold shift and then you hit this move button and you can see how this clap is moving from pad to pad. You can do it on the group level. I can move this group here to the next one over and you can do it at the plugin level. You again, hold down shift and then you can move these plugins back and forth. And it's so great that they have this option. So for this round, I think the machine definitely deserves the win. Okay, so let's talk about some differences between the two with regard to what I would call timing. We'll start with quantization. The force does kind of have an edge over the machine with regard to the quantization or timing correction is what they call it in the Kai world. You just have a lot more controls. You can select whether or not you want to quantize the starting point, the ending of it, the length, or put it in legato mode. 
and then a variable strength all the way from 100 to zero. Compared to the force, the machine has a little bit less control. For example, the only two options you have for quantization are 50% and 100%. You could keep hitting the 50% button several times and that's gonna move you closer to 100%, but you can't go lower than 50. Now, despite having less control over quantization, you do have this really unique one called the play option. And what that does is it actually shifts the timings of your notes in real time, not just afterwards, but as you're playing it. So if you wanna sound like you're really on the beat while you're playing live, you could select this option and it's gonna correct your playing. Now, obviously, if you're a little bit late, you can't like pull that forward in time. So it's gonna go to a later note or beat. So it could create some glitches, but that's a really unique feature. Moving on to how they handle time signatures, one huge bummer about the force is it only has four, four time. That's it, nothing else. Now on the machine, you can basically do whatever you want to, and you can choose any number up to 16 for the numerator or the denominator. So basically, on the basis of that time signature thing alone, I'm giving this win to the machine. Okay, so the final matchup that we're gonna look at between the two is about finishing tracks. And let's hone in first on the differences on how you arrange a final song. And while you can certainly work with clips or loops and move those around to rearrange them into some kind of song, what really sets the force apart is the arranger. And here's why this is such a unique feature. Let's say you're making a track and you have three different loop ideas, A, B, and C. And then you make a song by taking these loops and then putting it into some sort of an arrangement. On the force with the arranger, you do the same basic thing except for one big difference in that you can record other tracks directly into the arranger that might go through several sections of the song or maybe all the way to the end. And also that you can have automation flowing through these different sections that follows the shape of the song, not just individual parts. And that helps you address the biggest problem with modern producing, which is adding different loops together, that these transition points can feel very unnatural. By contrast, on the machine, you're just stringing different patterns, loops, or scenes together to make a song, but none of that flow through. Next, let's discuss the differences between the two in terms of finishing up tracks on a computer. Because let's just say it, that as much as fun as it is to work on a standalone device, it's really hard to produce a finished quality result that you might wanna put on Spotify or something else like that without the assist of a computer or in a more advanced DAW. And while the MPC has computer-based software that works alongside the standalone device, Akai decided for some reason that, oh, we'll just use Ableton instead of building software specifically for the force, which makes sense because the workflow is so similar. I mean, just look at the push and the force here as an example. But admittedly, that integration doesn't work all that great, which makes sense because the Akai and Ableton are totally different companies. Force is a very niche product, so it's not like they're working that hard to make sure this works well together. Now, the machine has really robust computer-based software, because that's essentially where it started. And we've already talked about how many more sounds and effects you can get when you hook up a machine to a computer. Okay, so here's the moment of truth. Force has the Ranger, but the machine has better integration with the computer. So I'm gonna call this one a tie. Now, before we tally up the total of this head-to-head -head battle, let's quickly talk about a few extras. And let's first talk about the Machine Jam, which is a whole nother controller that you can hook up to the Machine Plus and you can use to trigger and control patterns that's more similar to the Force. I did include this one in these comparisons because you can do something similar on the Force with external MIDI gear, but you have to do all the programming for it. It's not automatically integrated like the Machine Jam. Now let's just talk for a second about the Force and Akai, because let's face it, the Force is basically like the bastard child of the Akai product line. By contrast, the Machine Plus is the flag ship in its product line. And I don't necessarily think this makes one better than the other, but I think it is important to bring up. Now, both Akai and Native Instruments make really great expansion packs, although the MPC world definitely has a lot more independent creators, but they both have a lot of great sound. And the last thing we'll touch on before we tally up the results is controlling Ableton. The Force, when you go into Ableton control mode, does do a pretty good job. You can control a lot of things from the screen, from the knobs. The only thing you can't do is use it for finger drumming. But you can only do the controls over Wi-Fi instead of a USB cord. And consequently, that connection is often unstable and glitchy. Strangely, the Machine Plus does not control Ableton. You can do that with all the other modules, but not with the Plus, who knows why. Okay, so here it is, the result of my totally subjective scoring for this. The Force ended up with nine points, and the Machine also ended up with nine points. Okay, that's a wrap. Let me know in the comments below if you agree or disagree with any of these points that I made today, or if you think I left something out. Stay tuned for some more comparisons coming up.